I'm Jenna Kelly with the Green Girl Minute, and I am here with Dale Osborne of DishGen Developmental Services here at the National Wind Technology Center at NREL. And today we're going to talk about the five steps for wind development process. So briefly, can you give us the five things you need to do? There, there are, there, of the five things are required, they're contracts, basically. So we have to do land agreements that allow us to use the private landowner, the federal landowner's property for the study and development and operation of a wind facility. Mm -hmm. Then we have to do uh, wind studies, and the wind studies typically take about a year to do. Mm -hmm. How much do those normally cost? I'm sure uh, roughly expensive. about $30,000 per tower to install. Typically you would install a tower about every three square miles. Mm -hmm. And then after the wind studies, or, or in parallel with the wind studies, we'll do what's called land use permitting and also environmental permitting. The land use permitting is granted by the counties in which the project is located, and the environmental permitting is done either by federal agencies such as Fish and Wildlife Service, or typically if it's on private land at the county level. And how long does the, do those permitting processes take? Well, the process is not quite so long, but the studies can be extended periods of time. So in some cases, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service would like to have two years worth of study. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, we can get by with about one year worth of study, a full cycle of how the animals react in that area for that full year. Right. Then we have to have uh, what's called a transmission interconnection agreement, so we have to do very intensive uh, technical studies, typically done by a consultant and by the interconnecting utility, and that is typically takes six months to nine months to do those studies. There are three phases to it, not really important, but it costs about $160,000 to do those studies. And then when all of that is put together, the final contract that has to be granted is for a power purchase agreement, meaning the project is going to sell the energy produced to a utility who will buy it for a long period of time. Now one of the great unique aspects of wind facilities is that we can predict, actually commit contractually today what that utility will pay for electricity 20 years from now. Oh, wow. So, so it goes you, that far? It goes that future? far. It could go okay. up to 25 years. Wow. But so I think it's important for your audience to think about what products do they buy today mm -hmm. that they know exactly what they will pay for that product 20 years from now. And I can't think of very many. No, that's very hard to do. Mm -hmm. So what, what it does by granting that is it removes that energy being produced from the threat mm -hmm of any sort of environmental action, the threat, the threat of fuel price increases because there's no fuel here, and it always gives certainty then to the utility shareholders that they're going to be paying this amount of money for that amount of energy over all that time. Okay, with that certainty they're more likely to invest. In we hope they are. Yeah. There, there is, a, there is a, a negative aspect that the utility believes is a negative impact, and that is the wind blows when it blows. And so it produces electricity when the wind blows, but it doesn't when it doesn't blow. So utilities like to be able to turn the light switch on and off. Mother Nature doesn't work that way. And so what we have to do is plan for those events in which the wind is not blowing and how the utility can make up that difference in power. Okay. Well, thanks, Dale, so much for talking to us. My pleasure, Jenna. Thanks for tuning in to the Green Girl Minute.